Hey guys. Okay. Hi. This is my thick stack of books. <laughs> of books that I wanted to show you guys um, uh, just to preface this these are like my favorite books just for money mindset for practical money stuff um, mindset in general and just like self-development guys I didn't know it was like weird well I don't I don't think it's weird but some people think it's weird to be into self-development and self-development books that is not me uh, okay I think it's weird that I'm on the ground like this let me let me move I love self-development books some people think that's weird I think it's really normal um, like obsessed with um, transformation and helping people um, it changed their lives, helping myself change my life. Like, I love, I love transformation. I think it's such a cool thing. Okay, are you guys gonna stay? Stay. Good. Okay, so I have a thick stack of books here. Ooh. Okay, and <laughs> yeah, now they're everywhere. So let's start off with money books because I think those are fun. Um, so I have a mix of books. So there are some practical books um, in terms of like investing and stuff. Those two really good books for investing are this uh, by John Bogle, one of the best index funds um, founders. He's the founder of Vanguard Group um, and former chairman. So he's like freaking amazing. This book, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's called The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. It is not really about investing. I mean, it is, it, it is about investing, but it's what it's really about is index funds. So this is basically like a 200 page book, all convincing you to put your money into index funds, um, which is the group he founded, Vanguard Group, has some of the best index funds in um, the US, so rightfully so because he literally wrote the book on index funds um so he has a uh, i think this is a series a little book series um so you can try it out but this is basically everything you would want to know about why you should be investing in index funds so give that a read this one is called the intelligent investor this is a super famous book for value investing. So if you don't know what value investing is, the idea behind value investing is that there are some companies that are underpriced, aka undervalued on the market, and if you buy into them when they're low, when their price on the market is lower than their book value, then they're like if you were book value just means like if you were to go buy a company today, what is it worth? So if the market price is less than what their book value is, then it's a good investment and you should buy into it. Um, it's obviously like, uh, like that's the general idea and he talks about that, but basically, so, okay, let me back up a second. So this is written by Benjamin Graham. Benjamin Graham is basically the, the guy who taught Warren Buffett how to invest. He was Warren Buffett's mentor and he wrote this whole book. Um, it looks thick, but it's actually half written by Benjamin Graham in like 1940, 60. Let me see. No, it has to be like in the 80s actually. So this was written in 1973. Um, and then this was updated in 2006. Um, so before the housing crisis, so I, I would love to see an update on this after the financial crisis of like 2008, 2009, but the commentary in 2006 was updated with, uh, by Jason Zweig, who's a really famous um, financial author. So basically, each chapter comes with its own commentary by Jason. So chapter one is written by Benjamin Graham, and then there's commentary in chapter one by Jason Zweig. Um, 
So if you buy this book, buy the one with the commentary because the one written by Graham is seriously super hard to read. Like I had to read it out loud to myself and like think about what he's trying to say. It's crazy. It's super hard to understand what Graham is trying to say, but the commentary really breaks it down easily for you. So yeah, this is basically like, the, the gist of this book is basically there are two forms of investing. There's passive investing and there's aggressive investing, investing um, or more active investing. So passive is basically uh, if you decide you don't want to research stocks, then put your money into an index funds and bonds. That's pretty much what he says. And um, the aggressive or like active investing is more like you have to research your stocks and and you have to like, yeah, do due diligence on them. And that, and then most of the book is basically about um, the, due dil the, 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 the due diligence that you do on stocks, um, reading through the 10Ks and stuff, and it gives you like some interesting insight into what you should be thinking about when before you invest a lot of money into stuff. But yeah, it's just funny because if this is also like, praising index funds and this is also praising index funds and Warren Buffett also praises the index funds obviously index funds are great if you don't want to think too much about where you're putting your money into um, but if you want to beat the market which is a really really difficult thing to do um, yeah then you can't put your money into index funds because index funds usually underperform the S&P 500 or like indexes, indices. Um, okay, I'm getting all, a little bit off topic, but I love this book. It's a, it's a classic, guys. You have to read this book. If you don't want to read the Benjamin Graham written part, read the commentary. That's, that's my biggest piece of advice for this. So there's another book on money. This one, this one is called Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's written by this guy. Um, his name is Robert Kiyosaki. So he actually wrote this book in order to promote his uh, board game. His board game was like, I forgot what it's called, but it was basically a board game on how to learn money mindset and how to deal, how to make money. That was what his board game was. And he wrote this book as a promo for it. Super interesting. But it has, it, prevent, it presents some really interesting ideas. Um, so it's about rich dad and poor dad is the name. So it's about his two dads. Obviously he only had one dad. So his one, his actual dad was like a PhD, had a PhD and was like really, really high up in the government, but like didn't make much money. And then his rich dad was his friend's dad who um, had his own businesses and owned real estate and stuff. And he just, um, shows you the lessons he learns from both of those two father figures he has in his life. Um, and it's just like a different way to think about the class system and how to make money and what you actually need to create multi-generational wealth. So I think it's a great way to reset, reset your mindset around finance. Um, yeah, the one thing I gleaned from this is that real estate is like, a really big deal and I should be investing in real estate. I think that's the biggest one. He talks about like uh, tax liens. Um, if you don't know what tax liens are, it's basically like if someone owes taxes to the government, you can buy the rights to their the taxes on their house. And um, it's like a big return. I think it's like you get like 17% or something um, returned on it if they pay you the taxes back. Um, I'm, I'm explaining it very poorly. Read the book and then research tax liens. Okay. So that was a good, that's, this is a great book on mindset and how to think about minds, but it's, it's half practical, half mindset. And this book I'm about to show you is like all mindset. It's kind of woo woo. Okay. It's 100% woo woo. Okay. It's called creating money. <laughs> um, this is a super super out there book. Um, it's called Creating Money, Attracting Abundance. It's by Sanaya Roman and Dwayne Packer. Um, it's, it's interesting. They talk about like spirit guides and like 
all the things. What this is basically about is you as a source of energy and how to, it gives you lots of techniques and exercises on visualization and calling in like people and clients and money and um, just like becoming a magnet for what you want. There's actually one um, or maybe two exercises on literally like visualizing yourself as a magnet. Guys, it, this is a super powerful book. Like, and it's great for understanding the visualization um, practices and yeah, using your inner guidance and trusting yourself. So I think it was a great book. Um, if, if you're into this kind of stuff, you'll like it. Um, if you're not, you'll probably not get it and think it's really crazy. I think it's, yeah, I think it's good, good shit. <laughs> Okay, um, I think that's all the money books I have. So let's talk. Okay, I'm gonna talk about these two. So these two are kind of similar books. This one, oh, my sleeve is on wrong. So this one is called, um, this is not a t-shirt. One second. Oh. And someone uh, recommended this book to me um, and I loved it. So it's about Bobby Kim. Bobby, it's called, he, he, his name is Bobby Kim, but he calls himself Bobby Hundreds. And um, this is about the Hundreds um, streetwear brand. So it's called, this is not a t-shirt and it's all about Bobby Hundreds and his business partners, his journey into creating the streetwear brand into like a multi-million dollar um, brand and that's still going, you can Google them. And yeah, it's super fascinating. He gets really into like, really deep into what he did and why he did the things the way he did and how his brand is groundbreaking. Yeah. Anyways, if you are thinking about starting a brand or a business, um, I think this is a great read. It's like an autobiography, but it reads more like a novel. And it is his writing style. So he's a blogger. So if you don't know The Hundreds, The Hundreds is a brand. It's like a, they started as like graphic t-shirts brands in like the early 2000s, I think, something like that. But it was all the, like the differentiator between them and like the rest of streetwear was that they had this blog. And Bobby was the writer of this blog. And so, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. He talks about how they first got into stores um, and all the, tick, the, all the things they did. So read this. And this one is called The Third Door by Alex Benayan. So this guy has a crazy story. I think he's like 26 year, years old. Like he's super young and um, like literally this whole book is about how he wrote this book like <laughs> it's, it's kind of that's kind of the whole point of it so um he went to i think usc and then dropped out um i mean up he, okay so his story is that he um went to usc and then realized like he he wanted to read a book about how people made it like about how like bill gates and like lady gaga and all of these like famous people how they started from the bottom and got to the top and he was like no one has a book on that so i'm just gonna write it like that's what he said and so um one day he saw that so so he was he wanted to write this book he had no money though he had no money for flights to go visit the people and so he was like, I need money. And then so in order to get money, he saw this thing. Um, I think it was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Price is Right. So he somehow snuck his way into The Price is Right and won the show and uh, won a sailboat and then sold the sailboat for cash and used that cash to fund his journey. And so that's what this whole thing is about, is like this crazy guy's journey to write this book about all the founders and 
he tried to write, I think it, this is kind of like that book, but it doesn't really go too deep into the founders. It's more about the fantastic journey he went on and the lengths people go to in order to fulfill their passions and stuff. It's, it's a really great read. It reads really fast. I think I read this in like a couple hours. It looks big, but it's a pretty big font. See, the font is big. It's like 300 pages. I read it in like two, two hours. So good. Okay. Oh my gosh, guys, this is a lot of books. <laughs> um, this book is super good for mindsets. Um, it talks about the four, um, the four obstacles in your life. This is the number one mindset book, guys. So if you're looking for how to stop self-sabotaging, how to learn more about yourself, like this is your go-to book, guys. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, he, Gay Hendricks, I believe, went to, he's like a PhD and like taught at Stanford or something. Like he's a super, yeah, he has a PhD. Uh, he's just, he has a super decorated resume of accomplishments. He wrote this book. It's all about the four beliefs we have about ourselves that sabotages us and stops us from getting to the next level and how to get out of it. So, um, yeah, hidden fears. That's what it's about. Okay. And, okay, so also this... This is a really great book. Um, it's called You Are the Placebo, but this is honestly not my favorite book. Um, my favorite book, so it's all, it's written by Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's a super cool guy. So his story is that he broke his spine doing, I think, a triathlon um, when he was turning on his bike, uh, a, an 18 wheeler truck ran into him and his spine was like broken and shattered and <sighs> guys it sounds crazy but he like basically used his mind to meditate and heal his spine back they the doctors told him that he couldn't heal his spine um, and that he would need surgery and that and so he was like no I don't want surgery I'm just gonna like meditate on it because his whole idea is like the body usually heals itself. Like if you get a cut, your body heals itself. Your body knows how to heal itself. Um, so his idea was like, if you concentrate really hard on healing um, part of your body and, and focus on it for like a long time, um, you'll be able to heal yourself. And so that's where his journey began, but his books, go way beyond just like healing yourself. They go, so the book that I really love that's kind of related to this one, I lent it out so I don't have it with me, but it's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it's super interesting because it talks about all of the traumas you go through in life. It talks about um, all of the identities you assume and how to break out of those identities and how to let go of like those traumas in your life that are literally memorized by your body. So yeah, it's it's a super interesting book. I highly recommend, like out of all of these books, that is the number one book I would recommend if you are starting to learn more about yourself, if you're starting a self-development practice, read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, do those meditations he does. It, it seriously changes your life. It not only helps you heal yourself if you need to heal yourself, um, it also just generally helps you like live a fuller life, live a more abundant life, and unlock. it literally unlocks the secrets to life, guys. Okay, and then the last book I have is Atomic Habits. I've talked about this before. Atomic Habits by James Clear. So this is all about habits. It kind of, so, if you read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, this is a, it's like very practical sister book or brother book, whatever. So if you read them both together or one after the other, they go super well hand in hand. Um, because this talks about identity change within, 
within the spectrum of your habits. And then breaking the habit of being yourself talks about that, but in a way more scientific and motivational and and compelling way. So when you read them both together, it's like, boom, like, it's, it's the ultimate force. <laughs> so highly recommend this, highly recommend breaking the habit of being yourself, but if you have to choose one or the other, definitely read Dr. Joe's Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, guys. Cannot stress that enough. <laughs> okay, so those are all my favorite books, guys. Um, <sighs> I've been talking for like 30 minutes, okay. So I guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments which book you're adding to cart right now and which one you wanna read first. Ooh. And ooh, yeah, I need to go drink some water. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Vlogmas is real, guys. <laughs>